Hi, my name is Peach and welcome back to MoGraph Monday. Today I'll be showing you how to make this motion graphic zipper transition in DaVinci Resolve. Now, if you haven't seen the tutorial about stinger transitions, go watch this video right here before you watch this one because it'll explain to you how this transition works. All right, let's get started. To start off, we have our clips like this and I'm gonna put them in compound clips. So I'm just gonna click the clip, right click it, and then go to new compound clip. I would bind C so I can do it really quickly just like that. And I'm gonna shorten these clips at about one second in time. I can just go to the end, hold shift and hit the arrow key and that'll go one second forward in time. And I can shorten this clip just like that. And then I can do the same thing here, shorten it and then just move it here. So now we have our clips just like this. What we need to do is give extra room for this clip so it can bleed onto the other clip. So I'm gonna do about eight frames to the left. I'm just gonna drag this for eight frames like this and that's good and now we have frames extra so we can put our cross dissolve on there so we can grab our cross dissolve from our effects library we're going to the toolbox go to video transitions and grab our cross dissolve and put it onto the clip just like this so we have that and we're going to click our cross dissolve we're going to right click it again and convert it to a fusion cross dissolve then we're going to go inside fusion here we have our clips just like this our last clip is going to be on top our first clip is going to be here so we can just add a merge node instead and now we have our clips just like this and the way we're going to start to make our zipper animation is we're actually going to make a matte for it so right now i just grabbed that background node from our toolbar and i'm just going to add an invert color node just have a white version of this right here and then i'm going to add the burn away node that we saw in the stinger transition tutorial i'm going to add the black part to the yellow part of the burn away and then the white part to the green part of the burn away and then let's go to our transition and then let's go halfway so you can see what our edge looks like and so basically we're going to turn all this down we're going to scale down roughness we down we're going to turn the melt all the way down or all the way down and just do everything that's not a color we're going to turn it to zero and once you have everything there we just have this line and then we're going to change our motion to a path this will create little stars at the end of our comps right here so we can position where we want the transition to go so i'm going to put this one on the left side to the right and the one on the right to the left if we hit Control g you can see a graph and we can actually place these on the actual ends of the clip just like this and there we have our path and so if we move this transition you can see that that is our path that we have here and so what we need to do in order to animate this is put anim curves on this transition so we're going to right click modify with and then put anim curves and then go to our modifiers going to make our curve custom and then you can do our animation just like this i make a little s curve i think that's the, what looks the best something like that and so now we have an animation like this let's get rid of our grab and then we can go back to our mat over here and then so if we just take this burn away already and then plug it into the mask input of the merge one you can see nothing happens until we go to settings and change the channel to luminance and now we have our wipe just like this and we need to add a motion graphic to it i'm just going to add a transform node and i'm actually going to scale this up just a little bit because it kind of curves out with how the burn away is so i'm just going to scale it up just like that it won't do it won't make much of a difference and then now we are going to make our shape so we can add a matte control like this connect the transform to the matte control like that and then we're going to add a time speed node right here and we're going to connect the transform to the time speed just like this and then we're going to put our delay to negative one and then we're going to connect this to the garbage mat of the mat control and then in the mat control we're going to go to down to garbage mat we're going to change the channel to luminance and we're going to hit invert see that we have here and if the white one needs to be on this line right here so we can actually just uh control t this burn away and then undo our invert like this and now we have just the white part that is here and then this will be what we plug into a background node so connect the mat control to the background node right here and then change the mass channel to luminance again and then we can change the color to whatever we want let's just do something like this and then we can merge this on top of our transition right here and now we have a graphic transition like this if you want to make this line thicker you can go to our time speed and add in a load dilate node and then bring this down and this will actually bring this thickness up we want to make these lot these lines wavy we can add the waviness node and put it on the burn away right behind the burn away just like this and then change the waviness type to horizontal with the speed down and then we could change the scale and the strength of our waviness just like this i think that'll look good and then we have something like this sometimes you can see that this is not smooth at the beginning like this and so what we can do to fix that is go in front of our burn away we're going to add a blur node just like this and we're going to blur it just a tad bit and then we're going to add a bitmap node like the blur to the bitmap and then like the bitmap to the source of the waviness just like this and make sure our channel is going to be on luminance and then we could bring this down and bring this up a little high and so we could smooth out the little detail that's there and so then we can get a sharper curve that's there for everything 
now we have our animation like this and we need to add our movement to our transition so we can have everything flow right and there's two ways that we can do this first way i'm going to do on the second clip is if we just hold the edge we can see where the line is just over here the beginning of the clip and then we just need to know when we see the clip in the transition so you know if that's the beginning we just do one two three four at the fourth frame this is where we first see the first part of the clip so we're going to go right click open infusion i'll oh, close this down we're going to add a transform node we're going to go to the fourth frame and keyframe there and then we're going to keyframe like we do in a regular slide where we like just like that and then we're going to move our footage just like this mirror it and then we're going to change our spline displacement control a hit s and then make our curve go just like this now we have our slide and it will happen right when we start to see the clip just like that and then uh, we're going to do the, the first part of the transition this part and this one's a little bit more tough because if we do the edge trick we can see that there's a lot more footage that's over here and we don't really want to use all that footage and so we need to know where exactly we need to put our keyframes we need to know where we first start to see the movement so if we go frame by frame we can see that this is this frame right here so if we go back one frame we double click the clip we actually see where in this clip that our playhead is so that's going to be if we just move the arrow key just like that we can see that this playhead is at 18 frames so we need to know that the beginning of our transition is going to be at 18 frames now if we click out of it and then we put our arrow to we finally see the last frame of this scene right here so it's just around here then we double click our scene and we move our playhead again you can see just about uh, 103 is where our last frame needs to be so we start at 18 and then we end at 103 which is also 27 frames so 18 frames to 27 frames so then we know where we're going to keyframe so we're going to right click this with open infusion and we go to 18 frames we're going to add our transform node right here put a keyframe here and then you go to 27 and that's our last keyframe let's move our clip just like this add mirrored edges and then we're going to change our spline graph just like this go a s and then we're going to make it a little bit more of a looser graph because we want the graph to move the whole time that's when the, our, our first part of the transition starts so something like that should be good and then if we play it back we can see that the movement it's all synced up correctly. I want this to start faster, we can go into Fusion and we could bring this back a little bit more and then make this curve more curvy. So we can actually start having that movement directly at the beginning of our spline graph that's there. Now that looks a lot better to me. So that is our zipper stinger transition. If you're interested in learning about how to make the text wrap effect in DaVinci Resolve, click this video right here. Otherwise, subscribe and have a good day.